And I thought Heroes of Wrestling was bad. I'm John Redlin with a retro review of the UWF Beach Brawl 1991 pay-per-view. Boy, barely anyone watched this show, barely anyone bought it, barely anyone attended, barely anyone made any noise. My God, the UWF was such a failure. It was such a freaking spectacular failure. Herb Abrams, after watching the uh, Dark Side of the Ring episode, Cocaine and Cowboy Boots, the Herb Abrams story, I decided to watch this, and it was more depressing than Heroes of Wrestling. And there were some good talents on this uh, on this pay-per-view. They had Bruno San Martino on commentary, and 550 people in a 4,000-seat venue. I mean, what the fuck? And I mean, I think, if I remember right, uh, I think maybe a thousand people bought this thing. And this is for what was supposed to be a, you know, upstart mainstream promotion. Herb Abrams had some really good ideas, but my God, this show was just fucking depressing. The first ever, and I believe only, UWF pay-per-view. I will be reviewing the Blackjack Brawl 1994 at some point. That's also on YouTube, but my God... He tried. He tried to do something. I'm not sure what the fuck he tried to do, but he tried. We get a traditional wrestling. Wrestling going back to the way it used to be. An opening with a few clips of UWF TV, which, hey, to, get, to give everybody credit, they, they were trying. They were really trying. A mixture of, you know, talents that still had some name value. People that maybe weren't quite, you know, uh, mainstream yet. And then some new talents they were trying to introduce. They were doing some good stuff. They just didn't have anybody goddamn watching. Uh, we had a card rundown with cheesy narration, Bam Bam Bigelow and Dr. Death with pre tape promos, uh, dubbed over applause and all this stuff. This was like watching the later days of the AWA just without the lineage. This was watching just something die on just on live pay-per-view. And everybody, no matter how hard they tried, it was just, this was fucking rotten. Uh, Brian Rico, I believe is his name, um, he welcomes us. The, uh, it's the $100,000 Grand Sports Channel TV Championship, where Herb Abrams did not like Vince McMahon refuting his, um, ideas of, you know, co-promoting, so he was holding up the UWF Championship, but holding FU, you know, the F and the U letters there, to make sure that Vince McMahon knew that he was telling him to F off. Because Vince McMahon, I'm sure, was watching this, and I'm, I'm sure he didn't have anything better to do in 1991, like, you know, try to make sure the Ultimate Warrior got there for SummerSlam. This, by the way, took place on June 9th, 1991. I was 10 years old, and if I had bought this pay-per-view, I would have regretted it. This, this, oh god, this thing was so fucking bad. Herb Abrams has a championship, talks about some stuff and everything. We get Craig DeGeorge, to his credit, not all that bad. Not great, but not bad. Bruno San Martino on commentary. Bruno San Martino, the living legend. You know, he was you know, a long-time WWF champion and just literally one of the biggest legends of wrestling on this show. Craig was, again, okay. I mean, he wasn't great, but he wasn't bad. I mean, and for calling his, his only pay-per-view, I'm sure, at least up to this point, he did what he... He did fine. But the matches, does anybody really care? Does anybody really care about the matches? Yes, that's why you're tuning into this, but... This was 10 minutes before the first match. This pay-per-view was maybe from the first match to the post-match stuff about an hour and 45 minutes. And it had eight matches. You had the Blackhearts, which was Apocalypse and Destruction with Luna Vachon with a chain. Yes, Luna Vachon was on this. Destruction was also the future Gangrel. And actually, I believe they were together at one point. Or were they together until her death? I don't quite remember. But I know that they were together for a while. And they took on Firecat and Jim Cooper. Firecat was, I believe, Battlecat. Yes, Battlecat. Remember that? Remember that horrible thing? Well, the camera work was atrocious. And not that the guys didn't have some talent, but just the work was bad. Everybody was just in the way. No shots were any good. It was poorly lit because there was only 550 people in a 4,000-seat venue. And it felt low rent the the, ma the match is okay the guys tried there was a, a, top, a middle rope leg drop for three there we go and then luna shouts rest in peace luna vachon we think a no dq no rules street fight match and i want you to bear that in mind no dq no rules it's a street fight it's Mr. All-America, Johnny Ace, you know, the worst version of the Dynamic Dudes, or the worst uh, member of the Dynamic Dudes, versus Terry Bam Bam Gordy. 
There were a lot of rest holds. There was uh, some, you know, some strikes and everything. And then they go outside and they battle into the crowd and the referee calls a double count out. In a no DQ, no rules street fight match, they call a double count out because they couldn't get him back to the ring. And then the brawl that they had, you know, battling into the ring and out of the ring and everything with a chair and all this stuff lasted longer than the actual match. This was something that people paid for. Not many people, but people paid to watch in the arena and also live on pay-per-view. <laughs> a no, no DQ, no rule street fight that ended in a double countout. It's like WCW booked this. We then get Mass Confusion, the Killer Bees, uh, B. Brian Blair and Jumping Jim Brunzel. Uh, versus the Power Twins, Larry and David Power, and they have Rock You Like a Hurricane as their theme. Seriously, because fuck music rights. This is the longest match of the show. This was 12 and a half minutes almost, and there was a lot of leg work by the Killer Bees for about like four to five minutes of this match, and then Blair got beat up for a bit, and then eventually they did the mask thing like they did as the Killer Bees. And then Sunset Flip pinned one of the power twins. I don't even care. One, two, three. We think of Rock and Robin versus Candy Divine for the inaugural UWF Women's Championship. The sad thing is, this is the second best match of the night. And I say sad, no disrespect to the women, but this match wasn't even all that good, but looked good all of a sudden because at least the women were taking it seriously and trying. And yeah, they were doing a lot of <coughs> hair pulling into snap mares and some strikes and everything, but at least they took it seriously. There were a few miscues, but that's bound to happen. And then we get a buckle whip and the dreaded roll-up, the most devastating maneuver in all of professional wrestling, even in 1991. And Rockin' Robin wins the inaugural UWF Women's Championship belt. And then get footage of Colonel DeBeers not wanting a black man to be his ref, and then whipping a black wrestler in other footage. This is in 1991. Colonel DeBeers, by the way, the wrestler, and I'm not, I don't, I don't know if the wrestler actually is right, I, I hope not. But the character was uh, billed as being from South Africa. I'm going to let you just think about that one right there. That probably explains the amount of racism here. And he's taken on Paul Orndorff in a strap match that lasted four minutes. Strap matches usually end when you touch all four corners, right? Nope, not in this one. We get some strap action and then a pile driver, one, two, three, and Paul Orndorff wins. Then Colonel De Beers pulls out a stun gun and zaps Paul Orndorff in the neck. This is on paper. This is wrestling, by the way, guys. This is wrestling. It's not. It's not actually live murder. He's not he's using the stun gun. Why? Why was he doing that? And the Colonel De Beers character, sorry, never really appealed to me necessarily. Granted, it's a very territorial character, but whoo, this is stinky. We didn't get Captain Lou's corner. The Black Hearts, you know, they're back out. Cool, great. And then Luna's there. Cool. I like Luna. And then Lou just gave up and left. Just said, nope, I'm done. We think about Backlund versus Ivan Koloff with Mr. Red, and I believe he was one of the guys who was on the uh, Dark Side of the Ring episode. I believe he was, uh, I think he was the one that was uh, Herb Abram's best friend. And, you know, it was cool to see, and if not, I apologize. Names kind of get in my head, but it was cool that, you know, they had Bob Backlund and Ivan Koloff. Ivan Koloff, pretty much at the end of his career, Bob Backlund still had some years left, but let's be honest, had passed, I don't want to say past the physical prime of his career, but he was kind of in a weird lull. This is two and a half minutes, and then the roll-up bridge wins it for Bob Backlund. This is two and a half minutes, and this was a match where they booked these guys and actually paid these guys to be on there in front of no people. And then get Captain Lou sho shoving Mr. Reb and push and pulling his pants down. That's what we need to see is a, a big guy with a weird mullet uh, running around in a sports coat and underwear. That's what wrestling fans pay to see. And then get wet and wild. It's Stevie Ray, um, not not the one from Harlem Heat, but he was also one that was on um, Dark Side of the Ring. And Sonny Beach, who I believe is also on Dark Side of the Ring, they took on... Cactus Jack and Bob Orton Jr. with John Tolos, who would later become the coach in WWE. You know, Mr. Perfect Manager for like all of five minutes. And he was in a cage above the ring, so he couldn't interfere. The cage was barely above the height of where a backdrop would be. If you backdropped an opponent, you could hit the cage. Now, I'm not saying I wanted somebody to be up there too high, but you could tell how low rent it was. And then... He even manages to get uh, brass knucks down to the ring at one point, but Cactus Jack does do his elbow outside. 
And I don't know why I'm calling this like it even fucking matters. This this, this pay per view is horrible. Um, the the brass knucks bump where Cactus got uh, hit. He got pinned, and then Orton Cactus brawl, and Cactus is bleeding because of course he is. Oh, this this pay per view. It, one of the worst goddamn pay-per-views I've seen. And it's just, it had no life to it, no matter how much. This reminded me of AWA Super Clash, but at least the AWA was once prominent. UWF never was, at least this version of the UWF. Not the, you know, the Bill Watts thing and all that stuff. And everything. You know what I'm talking about. The whole world class or, you know, you know world class going to this uh, promotion or, you know, changing to this name. Mid-South changing to UW. You get my point. It... A lot of name changes, but boy, that one had a lot more lineage than this. So, footage of Bam Bam Bigelow and Dr. Death Steve Williams advancing in this tournament, and then we get Herb Abrams with the belt and probably coked out of his mind. Uh, Bam Bam Bigelow, Dr. Death Steve Williams, UWF Sports Channel TV Championship. Well, they went power mad, and they both bled, and then there was a power slam for three. Power slam for three, and Dr. Death Steve Williams is the inaugural TV champion. Well, they're world champion. And then he cuts promos and everything, and it's not all that good. And this pay-per-view took years off my life. Um, and I know I joke about that. This is... It was as bad as you could imagine. It just... It was so fucking rotten. Let, let me know what you guys think in the comments. And I was like, I give talent to... I give credit to the talent. They tried. But there was no saving this show. From the low attendance to the low buy rate to just everything. Everything looked so low. This barely would pass for a show in the 70s. The 70s, like any, you know, outlaw show or any show that, like, you know, didn't have big production values. ICW looked better than this. You know, the early ICW and stuff like that. That the Popos ran. And they didn't have much of a budget, but that, at least, that looked good by comparison. This is 1991, and it barely could pass for 1971. Anyway, anyway, that would have been a 79. But anyway, I digress. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Like, share, subscribe, Twitter handle in the description. I'm Joe Ritland. I'll see you soon.